<laughs> Hi everyone and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Rosana and today's recipe is gonna revolutionize the way you cook. Just because if you haven't been able to find chorizo, guess what? We are making it today. That's right, we're making pork chorizo. You can even make this with beef. It's incredible and you're gonna love this recipe. I'm excited. How about we get started? Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is prep the dried peppers. And what I have here is four guajillo peppers and one pasilla. What's gonna happen is, you've seen me do this before, is cut the stem off, cut the pepper open, just like this and remove the seeds and veins now if you want to wear kitchen gloves for this please feel free to do so because we don't want you to get spicy hands it can really hurt I'm used to it so they should be fine for me by the way if you notice these guajillos are actually medium size just keep that in mind because they do tend to come in all shapes and sizes do the same thing with one large pasilla chile. Did you know pasilla actually means little raisin because of its wrinkles? It looks very similar to an actual raisin. It's lightly sweet, has a grassy flavor to it, slightly acidic and mild in heat. All right, these are all the dried peppers we're using today. Now. We're going for a mild pork chorizo. If you want it spicier, I suggest you add two to three chiles de árbol to give you that nice kick of heat. All right, let's head to the stove. Come on. I bet you recognize my comal, right? You've seen this in plenty of videos when I do roasting and we're gonna be toasting the chiles on here again. All right, so just place them on here and I have the heat on low because we don't want them to burn so just turn them as needed or should i say continuously because you don't want them to burn what will happen is they're going to turn really bitter and it's going to ruin your sauce believe me you don't want that if that ever happens to you i suggest you throw away the peppers and just start over so what you want here is for them to release that beautiful fragrance and as soon as they start to do that we're going to remove them I can smell these already. And if you touch them, they're hot on both sides as well. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove them. At this point, let's go ahead and rinse them. I've rinsed the dried peppers. Now we're gonna cut them into bite-sized pieces and just place them inside a large container. Then we're gonna add enough water to cover them. That way they rehydrate and this process takes about five minutes. Look what I have here. This beautiful piece of raw called molcajete is gonna do wonders in this recipe. So if you have one at home, make sure you bring it out because we're gonna be mashing our spices and herbs and we're gonna create a beautiful flavorful paste that's just amazing. Now, if you don't have a molcajete at home, don't worry because I will let you know where to incorporate all of these ingredients later in the recipe. As you can see, I have placed a clean kitchen towel under the molcajete because I don't want it to scratch the surface that I'm working on. So feel free to do that too. Okay, so we're gonna start with four peeled garlic cloves. Put them right in there. Also do one teaspoon of whole black peppercorns and four whole cloves right in there. What I like to do is tap on the ingredients first because I don't want them to start jumping around. When the oils begin to release from the garlic and you see all of the peppers crushed, what I like to do is add a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt to help break everything down. Everything inside the molcajete has broken down. It doesn't have the consistency that we want yet, but it is time to add the rest of the ingredients. And that's gonna be half a teaspoon of whole cumin, half a teaspoon of dry oregano, and half a teaspoon of dry marjoram. And finally, half a teaspoon of dry thyme. Now let's put some muscle into this and get this really finely ground. 
Right now we're gonna add a little bit of apple cider vinegar just to get all of that paste mixed in, loosened up. So go ahead and add one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. You can use white distilled vinegar as well. Mix everything in with the rock. Transfer it to a different container. There's still so much flavor in here. We're gonna go ahead and remove it. So to do that, we need to add one tablespoon of water in here. And with the rock, target all the areas and try to get as much of that flavor penetrated into the water. The reason why I didn't do water before is because we do want to add as little as possible. And the reason why I didn't do vinegar anymore is because we have a measured amount that we want to keep ourselves down to. Just go ahead and transfer all of that into the same container you have the paste in. Okay, now set this aside. Let's move on to the blending part of this recipe. If you don't have a molcajete, add all of those ingredients into the blender at this point. Go ahead and add all of the dried peppers, the ones we hydrated, and only add the peppers, not the water. Isn't it awesome that we can make our own chorizo? I get super excited. <laughs> okay, do not throw the water from the guajillos away because we may need it later on, so keep it on the side. Now add in a quarter of a medium yellow onion and half a cup of apple cider vinegar, and you can also use white distilled vinegar. Let's blend this until thick and completely broken down. Look at the results. This looks beautiful, nice and thick. Make sure you scrape all of the paste because we need all of this. If your blender is having a hard time breaking down all of the ingredients, you can add one tablespoon of this chili water at a time because we do wanna add as little water as possible to make sure we get that paste consistency. In my case, I didn't have to use it, and that's great, but you do have that option. Let's talk meat. As mentioned, you can make this with pork, beef, or even chicken. What I have here is one and a half pounds of ground pork picnic shoulder. You can use any kind of cut that you like. You can go to the leaner side or even the fattier side. It really depends on what you like. Just make sure that you do have a little bit of fat in there for flavor. Guys, we are working with a lot of red ingredients and I'm wearing kitchen gloves this time. I don't wanna stain my hands, but it is up to you. You can also use a spoon to mix everything in. All right, let's start with the paste. Pour it all in with the meat and make sure you scrape as much as you can into the bowl. This smells unbelievable. I should be making chorizo for a living, huh? <laughs> All right, let's add the ground paste. Now, if you use the blender, it should already be in there. Nice. I'm gonna add one teaspoon of ancho chile powder, two teaspoons of smoked paprika, two teaspoons of achote powder, and finally salt to your liking. I'm adding one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt. Now mix everything in. So the achote powder and the paprika are not only for flavor, but they're also gonna boost that red color. By the way, I will try to leave the links to some of the spices down in the description area. Look at these vibrant, red, fiery colors. For our next step, we're gonna need a colander because we have to place the chorizo in here. But first, place the colander inside a larger bowl. Now, I did line the bowl with plastic wrap, but that's only because once that moisture starts to release, I don't want it to stay in the bowl. So that's definitely optional. Place it inside the larger bowl. And now transfer all of the chorizo into the colander. Let's do that.
just like that. Now we're gonna cover it with plastic wrap and leave it in the fridge overnight. And the reason we are letting it sit in the fridge overnight is because it will release excess moisture, giving us the right consistency for the chorizo. All right, for time purposes, I have one here that I made yesterday. This looks so good. Come on, let me show you what it looks like. All right, check that out. It's not as wet looking and look at all that liquid it released. All right, to mold, it is usually done in pour casings, but I don't have access to it. And it just seems very practical to do it this way. So what I have here is a long piece of plastic wrap and I'm using a ice cream trigger release scoop. We're gonna do two scoops of the chorizo for casing. Place it at the edge or the end of the plastic wrap, just like that. Okay, fold it over the meat and then start molding with your hands and pressing on the ends. You wanna make it tight. And then fold. Keep pressing. As you roll, remember to press those sides. All right, now you're gonna twist the end, like so and fold it. Do the same thing here, twist it, and fold it. Perfect, now let's go ahead and do the rest of the chorizo. Done, aren't these cute? Plus, I think I have the hand for it too. <laughs> A hidden talent, huh? All right, I'm having fun. You are so gonna have fun making these, I promise you. And when you taste them, you're gonna be thrilled. I've already had my taste, so I'm definitely excited to dig in later on when it's cooked. Ta-da, these are done. They look beautiful. I actually left a little bit less than half outside because we're gonna cook it right now and make some delicious tacos. The rest are gonna go into the refrigerator and you can also freeze them. They are freezer friendly. Isn't that awesome? All right, let's keep it moving. Nelson, can you put this in the fridge? And I'll head to the stove. Okay, to cook it, I have a large pan over medium heat and I did go ahead and add a couple of tablespoons of olive oil. Now, if you know you added a lot of fat to your chorizo, don't add any and just add the um, chorizo to the hot pan. And then if you need it, you can add some, but I really doubt it. Okay, go ahead and break it apart. And this is about two of those logs that I did earlier. So it would have been a total of maybe six, depending on the size. Go ahead and stir as needed until the chorizo is fully cooked. Oh, it smells so good. It's ready. Let's make some tacos. Chorizo tacos are sold everywhere in Mexico and they are the type of taco you daydream about. Add the cooked chorizo to the center of the corn tortillas, sprinkle over them chopped onion, cilantro, salsa, and a kiss of lime juice. Try these tacos and fall in love instantly. A second bite will have you coming back for more. Chorizo is a staple in Mexico. It is basically a type of sausage we have made with ingredients used daily in a Mexican kitchen. I'm thrilled, I can hardly wait, but we have to because Nelson is gonna be tasting with us and he's excited as well. Come on. Let's not make me wait any longer. <laughs> oh, yes. Here you go. Grab one. Not the whole plate. Hello, everyone. Ooh, Just one. Look at that. I mean, look right. at how soft that tortilla is. <laughs> I had to. I was like, look, we, have, we made chorizo from scratch. Let's make some tortillas. You bet. It's a must. 
All right, let's do this. You ready? Yes. Mmm. <laughs> this is incredible. There's no comparison. I mean, there's just not. Yeah. Plus, you can feel all the love you put into it. And flavors. This is amazing. No, this is lovely. You know, they taste different than Salvadorian chorizos, but they both are equally delicious. Look, I remember growing up, we used to not always have chorizo because I'm not sure, maybe it was expensive. I'm not really sure why, but it was almost like a special moment. So every time my mom would go to the nearest city, which was like three hours away, we would always ask for chorizo and she would bring it and we would enjoy it so much. So every time I have chorizo, I have such great memories. I mean, it's incredible. And now that I can make it at home, it's even more special. Yeah. So, cheers. Nah. <laughs> you can't do that, Nelson. <laughs> it's a little too much. No. Let, let me bow down. No. no. <laughs> These chorizos are awesome. Hey, if your husband gets to do that for you, then <laughs> I guess it's really worth it. <laughs> yes, it is. No, but this is awesome. All right. Thank you. <sighs> you guys, I love it. I love sharing my recipes with you. And not only that, like I get to share a piece of my childhood, my culture. This is awesome. Thank you so much for watching, tuning in and giving me the opportunity to share my creativity and also what I have to offer. <laughs> well, I really hope you enjoyed this recipe. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video and click the notification bell. Also, don't forget that you can follow me on all of my social media platforms. All right, until the next one.